Good evening, everyone. This is Lisa Smothers coming to you live from New York City, where this evening we'll be talking about the Business Achievement Awards. It's exciting news. We've launched the Business Achievement Awards or relaunched the Business Achievement Awards, and we've gotten it back to where it used to be last year. There's a little bit of a different login. So what I'm gonna do is show you actually how to log in, show you how to manage the accounts, and I'm also going to go through an overview of the Business Achievement Awards. The Business Achievement Awards is really one of our most popular national programs. Every year we have about 11,000 students that actually achieve at least one level of the Business Achievement Awards. So. Let's take a look first on where you can go with your students on the national website, where you can actually kind of go through an overview of the BAA first. So what you do first, you're on our national website at www.fbla-pbl.org. You're gonna highlight the divisions tab up at the top of the page. You're gonna go ahead and go to programs, and I'm not using a mouse, so bear with me here. You're gonna click on programs, and you're going to go to the hyperlink Business Achievement Awards or BAA. That takes you to the Business Achievement Awards section of the website. At any time up here at the top of the page, if you wanted to look, at, look, of, uh, uh, look up students rather that have achieved the Business Achievement Award over the last five or six years, at any time you can view the previous BAA winners. Very shortly, we'll have the new ones and we'll start processing those as we've got this moving and there are several to be processed. So really the way that the Business Achievement Awards work is that once a student actually achieves it, we weekly run a query where we send out pins on a weekly basis. So even though the deadline is March 1st, we really don't wait until March 1st to actually send the pin. So let's kind of take a look as a review and let's first start with an overview of the BAA. So really the Business Achievement Awards were designed to be co-curricular, meaning that you could really use it in any class or some of our advisors across the country even have created a class called FBLA or a leadership class where the majority of it is the Business Achievement Awards. To make it co-curricular, we've aligned all our activities to the career clusters and the NBEA standards. This is so you'll be able to go to your administration and you can prove that you're going back and you're aligning to what you're, you're teaching in the classroom. It also aligns to the nine FBLA goals. So at any time, if you need to view the alignments, you can click on this hyperlink if you want to talk to your administration and you kind of want to explain to them exactly what this covers. So it talks about the different career development standards and what you're doing and the career clusters if I scroll down and the different things that you're doing. So really, the activities on each level have an education section. And this education section is really what's adhering to both those career clusters and the NBEA standards. So if we go back, there's really four levels. There's future, business, leader, and America. And each level builds upon the, um, the previous one. So in order to qualify for the business level, the student must first do the future award. Sometimes people ask me, oh, Lisa, can students achieve this all in one year? They can, it's hard, but I have had students done it. So even if you have students that are seniors, they can go ahead and they can work on this. So when the Business Achievement Awards was designed, it was really designed around the three words in our crest, service, education, and progress. So every section is going to have activities under service, meaning community service activities, because service learning is such a huge, th huge thing, not only in schools, because a lot of times um, students have to have community service hours for National Honor Society, some schools require them for graduation. Definitely businesses want to give back to the community and we are teaching our students to be business leaders. The education section on each level is always going to go back to those career clusters and the NBEA standards. And finally, the progress section really focuses on leadership activities, whether it be attending so many local chapter meetings or 
whether it be going to a state or a national conference. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm going to show you how we'll actually log into the Business Achievement Awards. Before we do that though, there's really instructions here that I would really encourage you guys to print off and kind of keep or you know take a photo. I don't know how you like to do things. I'm still, I guess it's a teacher in me. I still like to have things printed off. So there are instructions for registering students. So there really there's eight steps and I'm gonna actually go over them first and then I'm going to show you exactly how it looks. So you're really gonna be logging into the database to get to the Business Achievement Awards. So you're gonna log into your chapter membership record. You're gonna see a national programs button and that's new, that's just been added on Monday of the, this week. Then you're gonna register your students for any level and you're gonna see a view students tab, which you'll be able to uh, click on. Now, the one thing you do have to remember is these students must have membership orders, meaning they either have to be paid or they have to have a pending membership order. And I'll show you what I mean with that too. So you click on the award level for the button and then you register the student. Once you do that, you're gonna get a URL to the student portal, which you're gonna copy and give to your student. And again, I'm gonna go through this with you. So the student portal is also link, a link to it if they lose the link, students never lose anything, right? <laughs> you're probably all laughing, but it's going to give you the student portal back here on the website. So, you know, even if they don't copy and paste that link, they can get to the student portal there they're gonna use two things. They're gonna use their chapter number and they're gonna use their FBLA membership number. You're gonna always find your chapter number. I'm gonna show you on your chapter record and it's also always gonna be in the right-hand corner of the BAA when you log in online. You're gonna get the student membership number. Um, it's going to give you that in the email that you get for the student. You can always look up the membership number in your record as well and I'll show you how to do that. The students then select and work on their activities and inform you of when it's done. So in this process, we're back to it where it's kind of checks and balances so you can review your student work and I'll actually show you how to do that. At the very end, you're gonna see if your student has completed every activity that's required, then you'll see a submit button. So that's just like it has been in the past and you'll submit it. That's very important because if you don't hit the submit button, that means that the award will not be processed. So that's an important step. So let's put this all in action and take a look at it. So I'm gonna log into my membership record. So when I log in and we've logged in on the website, just like I've shown you in previous webinars, and you're gonna all come to the landing page, my.fbla-pbl. Remember in the past, we're gonna log into our membership record by going to advisors, clicking on advisors and going to manage your chapter. You're going to log in with your membership or with your email and your password. Again, if you've forgotten your password, you can always click here to reset it or you could have clicked back and reset it on the previous my.fbla-pbl page. We're gonna go ahead and log in. And you see here in the record, you're gonna see three buttons once you log in. Your chapter, which you already see, the Make Payments, and the National Programs button. So first, before we go into the National Programs, I wanna review what I mean by making sure that your students are active members or inactive members, meaning they don't have to be paid, but they have to have a, a pending membership order. So in order to do this or check this, we're going to go to your chapter. And there's a couple ways you can check it. So as it's thinking, again, I'm prime contact of several. I'm gonna use Ruston High School for my test school. And I'm gonna always go to the manage students buttons to make sure that my students have pending membership orders or they're paid. Now, your quick buttons to do that is you can view your active students, and these are students that are paid in the system and those are gonna show up for the BAA when we log into the BAA or they can have pending membership orders, meaning they'll show under the view inactive students. 
So let's quickly go to the student rosters so I can just review with you how to create those membership orders again. So we're going to manage students. And once we go into that, it's gonna come up with our student roster or the students that either have been interested or previous members of our chapter. And it's on this page where it's going to also show their membership number. So at any time you can always check their FBLA ID. So we're here on our membership um, record or our roster. And so what you see here is you're always going to see the record number. The record number is their FBLA ID, okay? So you're gonna have the first name, the last name, an email. You do not have to have the email in there for the students to work on the BAA. That is not required. So that's just something that you can put there if you want them to have a student profile, but it's not required for the BAA. So in order to have a membership order, if they already have an order, it would say pending order over to the right. Or again, if we're creating a membership order, we have to click our student and we go up to the top of the screen and click on create a membership order. That's what I mean by creating a membership order that your students in order to be show up to register for the BAA either have to be paid or have this pending membership order. So I've just created the pending membership order. Remember if I'm adding a new student, you just click this button here to add a student. And you also need to do that second step to create the pending membership order. So that's how you do that. I wanted to review that before we went into the BAA. Secondly, if you ever forget your chapter number, all you simply have to do is go into manage chapter profile, and it'll also show up on the BAA, but I just wanna review this. You go into account, you scroll down, FBLA organization ID, that's your FBLA chapter number or your FBLA ID. So let's go back and let's take a look at registering for the BAA. So again, we're going back to this new box that says national programs. And this is the box that you're not only gonna use for BAA, you're gonna also use it for the CSA and nonstop November, which by the way is open. So let's click on national programs. Once you click on national programs, you're gonna see your school. And you're gonna see buttons, okay? I'm gonna use again, Ruston High School as my test school. You have the button access web FBLA PBL .org. This is the advisor area. This is the area that you're going to use to manage your BAA awards, just like you did in the past. So the high school level is always going to use BAA. CMAP, if you're in college, you do CMAP, but you guys are all high school, so ignore this button and your CSA button is right here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and view my students that are eligible to register for the BAA. I click on that and it has my students that either are paid or are pending membership orders. And you see right under the student, you can register each one of those for the different levels of the BAA. So let's say that I wanted to go ahead and register James for the future award. So I just click on register for the future award. And I've, that's all it is to it, one click. You've already registered James. So it gives you the link for the member to log in. This portal is the same one that shows up on the main website that, that I already showed you. But to start with, copy and paste this URL and give this to your student. They're gonna need their membership ID, which it gives it right here and right here, the 3014364. And over to the right, it should have your chapter number. Again, you can always look it up as well. That's all there is to registering a student. It's actually easier than it's ever been. So I'm gonna click out of this. And the next thing I'm going to do is go back and I'm gonna show you how to manage your BAA awards. So we're gonna to go to that advisor area, that accessweb.fbla-pbl.org. I'm gonna click on that. And this advisor area should look familiar to you. Um, this was the same area that you had in previous years. 
So we're going to go ahead and go down and we see FBLA Business Achievement Awards online. This is what we want. We're going to click here. And so you can always get a list of membership IDs again here if you need to. Okay. And then you can manage your future awards by reviewing your future award registrations, the same with the business, the leader, and the America. So let's take a look at the future award registrations and take a look at how this looks. So I'm going to go ahead and click on review future award registrations. And these are all of my students that have registered. Okay. So it gives me the active future. At any time, I can see who I've submitted, if I've submitted somebody, which is kind of cool. And if any time you have a student on here and you know that they're not going to do the future award and you've registered for them, simply click deactivate and it goes ahead and takes them off the list. It's as simple as that. So I'm Susie's advisor and I want to take a look at how she's been doing and take a look at her work. So all I have to do is go over here to the, well, actually, I guess I'm on Abby or Jennifer Abby. I'm going to go here and click on the key. And we can see that this student hasn't selected any activities, okay? So they have to go back and select the activities. And I'm going to kind of show you what that is in a little bit. This is the teacher view. Now, what I would do if I were you guys is um, I would really encourage you to just register yourself as a student so you can log in and see it as a student would see it. So I'm going to close this out and let's see if James has done any better. Nope. James hasn't picked any either. Boy, that's not good, is it? Let's see if Keisha's done anything yet. I guess my students were, were not very active and they have not selected anything. So I'm going to go ahead and go in and I'm going to um, take a look. Let's take a look at the advisor area again. I'm going to go back out and back out one more time. And let's take a look, and I'm going to just move something here because I can't see this right now. So if you look um, on the right, just before we go back into this, I want to kind of go over a couple things. So you can review all your leader awards over to the right as well, okay? You can do that, or you can download your reports into Excel, okay? So those are kind of important things that you could do, but I'm going to go back and I'm on the advisor home. So I'm going to go back again and take this over. Sorry about that. Take it back. And I'm going to go ahead and go back to my Impexium National Programs. And I'm going to go to View Students for the BAA. And I'm going to go ahead and register, let's see here, register as Susie for the Future Award. So if I look and register Susie for the Future Award, her number is 303113. So if I go in, Go to this portal. Let me just quickly, sorry about this. Go back to this portal. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and go back um, to the main website. Sorry. And go back to the advisors area, go back to the BAA. And I'm going to go back to the main website because I kind of want to go ahead and take you through the preview activities. Okay. But if you actually go into, let's take a look at uh, the overview of the student awards. Whoops, I would need to log out as an advisor. And that's one thing to remember 
that if you you need to log out of the advisor if you go back to it so this is actually where i wanted to go so what you can do is go ahead and let's preview the activities so i can show you what they are so we're going to go ahead and preview the future award activities because so i want to show you kind of what the students see and you can also see what the students see by previewing this because i would log in in the student but time wise I'd rather do it this way because it's a little bit easier to do it. So the future award is really designed for your first or second year students and it's really designed to do it all at the local level. So they really complete 10 activities. You can see here the future pin, what it looks like. So as soon as they complete the activities and you submit the activities, we run the pins on a weekly basis and we'll be starting this next week and we send that out to the local advisors. So what it does is it breaks it down into service, education, and progress. So it's really simple activities. It's something as simple as donating five hours of community service. So all of the links for the students will be found right by their activity. So they, they see it right next to the activity. So what they'll do first on the activities and the only thing different between seeing this and what they and as they select them is they'll select like three activities so we'll say select your service activities and then they'll go on and select their education activities and their progress activities they must select the activities first before they see the links so again there's something as simple as preparing a bulletin board or under education there's an fbla knowledge quiz and it's kind of neat because with the system it's really a lot of graphics and it really kind of takes the gaming in there now we still are using tallow as an online leadership profile but at each level they're doing activities not all of these activities because with this you're back to uploading them into this system so what they're really doing with tallow is they're creating an online leadership profile so it's and i'm going to show you what that looks like as well so again they're creating that online leadership profile with tallow so as you see you can see through all of these activities they're aligned to the career clusters and nba standards so each of those activities are doing this You'll also see that certain activities are required at each level, and they're not exactly really difficult. It's something as simple as attending meetings, if you're looking down here, or when it does the programs worksheet, it does it as a bingo game. So it's very interactive with the students. So that's the future level. So once they do the future level, you submit it, you're going back and you're gonna um, register them for, oops, sorry, I went to the wrong one, the business level, which is the second level. And this is the way the pin is. And so from now you're doing 12 more activities. So, you know, at this level, they're a little bit more experienced. You're starting to get them into giving some presentations, if you look here, um, getting them into social media, Instagrams, and hopefully by doing this, they're not only learning, they're helping spread the word with your chapter as well. So it gives you some of those. And then under education, one of the thing is, is that again, they're adding to their tallow profile, but they're also preparing a resume, a cover letter, a job application. So the required activities are really designed to kind of not only build their skills, but build their profiles because the beauty of the tallow profile is it's private and the student shares with whoever they want to so when they're applying for college it's really giving them and for scholarships it really is giving them an advantage and a competitive edge because they already have that profile and by doing the activities we're really selecting the activities that's going to showcase their talents so again this is awarded at the local level so it's given to the local chapter advisor or mailed to the local chapter advisor with the intent or hope that they're going to give it out as a chapter meeting or a chapter ceremony. Once they've completed this, you've submitted it, you register them for the leader award. I'm using a touch screen, so that's why it's jumping ahead a little bit. Now they're selecting 14 activities. 
One thing that's required, they're running for local, state, or national office or serving as a campaign manager or committee chairman. They're participating in a national service program, one of ours. So we have several there um, from the March of Dimes to Community Service Day to Lead for Change. So there's a very much a variety of things that they can choose from. They also have some optional activities. Under education, they're adding more to their tallow profile. They're also creating a travel brochure about the NLC and an electronic presentation. So we're giving them scenarios in which they're assuming that they're marketing or recruiting FBLA. So it actually kind of gives them more scenarios or kind of really an idea when it like is like to not only do a presentation, but actually organize a trip, do a budget, you know, all of those things that you're already probably teaching in your classroom. You also have under progress, there are doing the membership madness award. Now, one thing I didn't mention with you at each of these levels, the future, the business, the leader and the America, not only are they getting a pin, but they're also earning a digital badge when they complete that level. And during the different levels as well, there's certain things where they get a separate badge. For example, one of the things at the leader level, which the pins are sent to the state to award at the state leadership conference, one of the things that's required is to recruit five members for membership madness. There's a digital badge that they'll also earn with this for their profile, and that's new this year. So if you look at some of those different things, um, they do have some new new activities there. So then the last preview activity is really the America level, which is the top level. But I'll tell you, the last several years, I've had more students that have really achieved this. And that's great because I look at it like not everybody's going to win a competitive event. And this is another way for them to earn national recognition. So the last couple of years, we've had about 350 students complete this. And almost every one of those students are so proud of this award, they come to nationals to get that pin. And they also get a ribbon at nationals for that. But this one's due April 25th. The other three levels are due March 1st. So this one gives a little bit more time, but now they're taking the, the um, presentation, some of the information that they use at the leader level, and they're going a step further. So now they're doing they're taking that recruitment project and they're taking it a step further where they've not only they've taken that presentation and they're actually preparing for the oral presentation part whether it be for a presentation in your chapter meeting or to one of your classes one of their favorite activities at this level and they really like it is they do an autobiographical scrapbook presentation in either a video or a slideshow and they set that to music and the students really do like that. One of the other things that's required is they participate on a committee to plan a free enterprise project. And I think that's really important because so many students don't understand about American Enterprise and we sponsor American Enterprise Day as one of our national celebrations. So that's really why this is included as one of the activities because it is an important concept. So under education, they're doing um, a blog. They're finishing up their e-portfolio. They're creating a TBL magazine cover. So they're doing a little bit more, a little bit more with social media, virtual reality, a lot of different things like that. So those are the different things that they can do with that. So that's kind of an overview of the BAA. So if we go back and we go back to what we did on the website, again, let's review. So we found that we can register students for the different levels. Remember, though, they have to be either active, which means paid students, or inactive, meaning they have a pending membership order. So if we do the back arrow, we've learned that we manage them in the advisor area. So you go through and you manage your website using BAA online. If we go back and we go to the other part of our website and go back to the divisions and we go back to programs, 
Sorry about that. Got to national officers by myself. A little bit happy here. Sorry about that. I'm using a touch screen instead of uh, my mouse. So forgive me a little bit. I go to programs. I go to business achievement awards. That's where I'm going to find my instructions. So again, these instructions are really good. Um, I would really either copy and paste them and keep them kind of near you because it gives you a lot of help, gives you an overview of the business achievement awards, gives you the alignments, the different programs. So that's kind of a, a quick overview of the business achievement awards. I just wanted to give you enough to get started. So let's see if I have any questions. Will students' prior work still be there? Yes, students' prior work was transferred over from the database. So if they were working on the future award already, it will still be there when, you, when they log in and you can go ahead and you can look up their chapter number. I mean, their FBLA ID, that's what they're gonna log in with and the chapter number and they can just log in. So that, that login works if they were registered for last year as well. So it's not a new registration, it does carry through. Now, if you find that there's an issue and you don't see students work from last year and you know it should be there, let me know. It could be that maybe the student was registered under a different number because there are some, some duplicate um, members in the system. So that's just a matter of combining the records. So the students' records will still be there um, if you have students that are ready to submit, because I know students have been working on things, because a lot of people told me that over the summer, which is really why they were upset that, that at first we didn't have this back. So that's why I'm so happy to have this back. They had students that worked on it over the summer and they were ready to submit. So now they can go ahead and submit to get those pins. So, you know, the really... Um, the reason why this wasn't up on August 1st, and I'll be honest with you, it's because when we went to the new database, the two didn't talk to each other. And so the advisors, we heard you, a lot of them really wanted this old system back. They liked the way it tracked things because, you know, it does keep track of their activities and there's big check marks that come by. And so this gives this back to them. So we're really excited about this coming back. Again, if I go to the advisors area itself, remember just as a review, you'll see everything is still back, kind of pretty much what you've seen before, including the resources. So those are all back. And just as an aside, um, we just opened up nonstop November today, and you can find that in the FBLA chapter challenge dashboard with the registrations. Oh, I'm bad at this without a mouse. I should never do this again. So again, this lets you go to nonstop November. So the advisor area is pretty easy to manipulate. Doesn't look like I have any other questions. So thank you so much for joining me today. We'll have more of these webinars to go through the advisor area and national programs. If you have questions, be sure to shoot me an email at membershipdir at fbla.org. Have a nice evening.